Hey guys, welcome back. Thanks for tuning in. This is Mike and his whiteboard. My name is Mike, this is my whiteboard, and today we're talking about break-even prices. So you probably hear it on the network all the time, a break-even price and how we're calculating that for our probability of profit on the Doe platform. So today we're gonna break it down completely and pretty much show you how you can calculate your break-even price with debit trades, credit trades, and neutral trades as well. So let's get into it right away. So when we're talking about break-even prices, we're, we're we're pretty much talking about how I can trade or close my position to obtain a PL of zero dollars. So let's take an example of a ticket. So let's say I buy a ticket to an upcoming Blackhawks game. If I can get it for $75, that's an amazing deal. But let's say I get it for $75 and just before the game, I find out I can't go anymore. So what I need to do to obtain zero PL is sell that ticket for $75. So if I bought it for $75 and I sell it for $75, that's gonna pretty much give me a break even. It's gonna be a zero dollar PL. There's no profit there, there's no loss there, so I'm pretty much breaking even. Now, in the options world, we don't have to buy something to sell it. We can do the opposite also. So we can sell something to open and we can buy it to close. So we can sell naked options, we can sell spreads, which we'll get into here. But if I'm selling a ticket for $75 to a friend and let's say they can't go anymore so they need to get rid of it, maybe I'll, I'll just decide to go. So I can buy it back for the same price. I'll do my friend a favor and I'll break even at 75, or I'll break even at $0 with this $75 ticket. So I sold the ticket for $75, bought it back for $75, so I've, in essence, obtained that $0 P&L. So let's take a look at some options trades and how we can calculate this mathematically here. So if we go to the next slide, we've got directional debit trades. So when we're first looking at a call, what you wanna do for calculating break-even prices is to add the debit amount to the long strike. So let's say we've got a stock here trading at $35. Let's say I end up buying a call at the money. So we've got the 35 strike and I bought it for 75 cents. My break even is 35.75. And I know that this is true because I bought it for 75 cents and at expiration if I hold this call all the way through, I need this to have value. So the only way it's going to have value is if it's in the money. So Pretty much here, what I need the stock price to do is go up to 35.75. So if I've got this option at 35 and the stock price is at 35.75, I can then sell the option for 75 cents. So again, it's the very same thing as the ticket example we gave earlier. So we bought the call for 75 cents and if the stock price is at 35.75 at expiration, I can then sell the option for intrinsic value. So again, at expiration, options are pretty much only gonna be trading for intrinsic value. So I'll break even on this trade if I execute it this way. Now let's look at a put example. So with puts, what I'd wanna do is subtract the debit amount from the long strike. So again, a totally different example. Let's say I've got a $50 stock price and I buy an at the money put. So I buy the put for $1.50. I know right away that my break even price at expiration is 48.50. And that's because just the same as the calls, I need this put to have intrinsic value at expiration. And since I know that a put is the right to sell 100 shares at a certain strike price, if I own this 50 put and the stock is at 48.50, I know that I'm gonna be able to sell this put for $1.50. So again, I bought the put for $1.50. If I can sell it for $1.50 at expiration, I know that I'm gonna need my stock price to be at $48.50, and that's where my break-even price is. So this has been debit trades. Let's look at another example, and that's gonna be credit trades. So again, we're just looking at directional, very simple directional trades, so we can easily calculate our break-evens here. So let's take the opposite side. So now we've got a call, and what we're gonna do is sell this. So we're going to sell a call spread for 45 cents. So when I'm looking at calls, what we do is sell calls or call spreads out of the money. So basically what I'm gonna do is sell this above the stock price. So let's say the stock is at 29. So I've got this call spread here and I sold the 30 option and I bought the 32. So that creates the spread. Again, if you are having a hard time understanding what a spread is or how defined risk works, check out one of my earlier whiteboards. You can do that by just clicking on find shows at the top of and scrolling down to Mike and his whiteboard and we've got a segment there called defined risk and basically I explain how that works. So 
We've got a spread here. We sold the 30, we bought the 32. So we sold this for a 45 cent credit. So now with the cool thing with credit trades is that with break evens, it's basically a buffer, it helps me. So what I'm gonna do is add the credit amount to my short strike. So again, the stock price is trading at 29, but I know that I sold this spread for 45 cents, and since I sold the 30 option, I know that if I'm adding the credit to that short option, then my break even is gonna be 30.45. So what does this mean for me? This means that the stock price can actually breach my short strike and I can still be profitable. Because again, if I sold this for 45 cents of, of credit and at expiration, let's say the stock goes to 30.20. So I know it's gonna have 20 cents of intrinsic value, but I sold it for 45 cents. So even if the stock goes above my 30 strike and goes to 30.20, I can just subtract the difference, so 45 cents minus 20 cents of intrinsic value, and I know that I'll be profitable by the way of 25 cents. So that's an easy way to calculate break-evens on the call side. Now let's look at the put side. So it's very similar, it's just the opposite. So for puts, what I'm gonna do is subtract the credit amount from the short strike. So you see I've got this here, I'm selling the 120 put, and I'm buying the 110 put for $3. So just like the calls, my break even is going to be 117. So I'm subtracting that from the short strike of the put. So again, it's a buffer. It's gonna help me in this situation. So let's go to the next slide here and we'll talk about neutral credit trades. So what's cool about neutral credit trades is you can take the credit from both sides and add it together. So what we can do with trades like iron condors or strangles, which is what we're gonna be selling in high implied volatility environments. So if I'm selling it in a high implied volatility environment, I'm gonna hope that the stock price stays within my range, but also if implied volatility goes down, that's gonna be another way for me to be profitable as well. So what I can do is subtract the total credit from the put side and add the total credit to the call side. So what's really important to keep in mind with these trades is that one side must win. So if I'm selling, if I'm selling an out of the money call and an out of the money put, basically there's no way the stock can breach both of those at the same time and make both of those losers at expiration. If it breaches the put side, my call side's gonna be a winner. If it breaches the call side, my put side's gonna be a winner. So what's important to keep note is that if I'm receiving 40 cents for the put side and 60 cents for the call side, that gives me a total credit of $1. And what I would wanna do is subtract $1 from the put side to figure out my break even and add $1 to the call side to figure out my break even. So let's say I've got a stock price at $50. Let's say I sell a put at 40 and sell a call at 60. If I've got $1 of credit, my break even on the put side is going to be $39, so I'm adding that to the downside, so it's a buffer for me. And on the call side, on the upside pretty much, my break even is going to be 61. So I'm just taking that total credit and adding it to each side. So let's break this down and see why that is. So we've got 40 cents on the put side, 60 cents on the call side. Let's say the stock price breaches my short strike by a total of $1. So I sold the 40 and uh, the stock price is now at 39. So yes, I received 40 cents for the put side, so if I was just looking at the put side, I would see a 60 cent loss. But since I collected 60 cents on the call side, that offsets my loss. So that's why I can add these two together. Now even if I'm looking at the upside, let's say it breaches $1 on the upside, I'll see a 40 cent loss on the call side, but I'll see a max winner of 40 cents on the put side, which is why we can take these two credits, combine them together to get our break even for the overall neutral trade. So let's get to some takeaways here. So takeaways for breakeven is basically that a breakeven price is obtained by completing the opposite order for the same price. So with all these examples, pretty much what we can do is just take into account what we sold or bought that position for and figure out what needs to happen with the stock price to sell it for the same amount. So if I sold a ticket or an option for $75, or 75 cents in the option world, I need to buy it back for 75 cents or $75 to break even. And with rolling, what's even cooler is when we're rolling for a credit. So if I sold a put for 50 cents and then I rolled it into the future for another 10, I can take that total credit of 60 cents and now I know I need to close my position for 60 cents to break even on the entire trade. So debit trades have break evens that hurt you. So what I mean by this is that 
when we're talking about intrinsic value at expiration, if I'm buying a call and I'm buying that option, I need the call or the stock price to go up in value for that to have intrinsic value at expiration. So like we talked about in the example, let's give you another example. If I've got a 30 strike call at, uh, and the stock price is trading at 30, let's say I bought that for a dollar. I need the stock price to be at 31 because I need one dollar of intrinsic value at expiration. So I need to, since I bought it for a dollar, I need to sell it for a dollar to break even. So basically with debit trades, the break even hurts me. But the opposite true is for credit trades. So with credit trades, I've got break evens that help me, which is a big reason why we like selling premium here. So if I'm selling something, basically I can be right in multiple ways. So I can be right if the stock price stays the same if I sell an out of the money option. I can be right if it's directionally correct. So if I sell a put and the stock price goes up, then I can be profitable that way. But what's cool is that since I collected a credit, even if the stock price goes down below my strike, as long as it go, doesn't go down past the credit that I received, then I know that I'll still be profitable at expiration. And even if it does go past this strike to the same amount that I sold it for, I know that I'll break even here. And for two-sided neutral trades, combine both credits to calculate break-even. So just like we showed in the last slide, if I'm collecting 40 cents on one side and 60 cents on the other, I know that one side must win and both sides will help each other in terms of expiration and offsetting the loss if there is a loss on the other side. But hopefully the stock price stays within our strikes and we receive that max credit at expiration and max profit. So hopefully this has been helpful. This has been break evens. On Tuesday, we're going to get back into the Greeks and we're going to talk about Vega. So we're going to talk about how volatility has its metric and that is Vega. So hopefully this has been helpful. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you got any feedback at all, shoot it over to support at doe.com, support at or you can tweet us at doe trading at at doe trader Mike. Thanks again and have a great night. Thanks for watching. If you found this video useful, give it a thumbs up or share it with a friend. Click below to watch more videos on this subject or subscribe to our channel. For even more data and research, check out